Hi, I'm Corey Rice with BNH Explorer Blog. I'm joined today by celebrity makeup artist Moani Lee. We're going to be talking about how to combine makeup and lighting to create strong images in both natural and artificial lighting settings. I come from the school of thought that there is no retouching, so a lot of the work has to be done by the makeup artist. So I'm glad we're actually here talking about lighting because it gives us a better sense of what your world is like and for you to get a better understanding of what our world is like. Not to mention I know a lot of makeup artists who are actually really interested in photography and who want to be able to harness the power of lighting to really enhance their own creation. So I'm glad we're having this conversation. We all have access to a very strong source of light, the sun. However, you want to be careful about how you use it whenever you're working with natural lighting. You don't want to be shooting at high noon like we are right now, where you have hard light coming down, casting really undesirable shadows from your model's face. You're also going to have difficulty with your model keeping her eyes open during a shoot whenever the sun's shining directly in our face. Now, if you're dealing with really strong light, what you can do is you go inside and find a good window. So that's what we're gonna do here today. Well, I'm glad you talked about a window because I love actually doing makeup in front of the window. I think natural light is the most honest light and you can really see all of the highlights and contours. You can see every blemish. You can also see the skin tone really beautifully. I think in natural light, it's really, really, really important to go incredibly natural only because in natural light, you can see a lot of texture. You can see a lot of product. So less is more in this situation. Also, you want to focus on the highlights and the contours because you're really playing to the sunlight. The way that I like to prep skin is to start off with maybe a, a gentle cleanser or a gentle makeup remover to take off any remnants of what the model or the celebrity might have come in with. So the other key is to make sure you find your favorite, most gentle, um, moisturizer just to hydrate the face. Does that feel good, Ari? It feels great. Okay. <laughs> it's like cool. Yeah. So I'm using a water-based foundation right now just to add that little kick of light underneath the eyes and on top of the cheekbones. And I'm keeping it really, really sheer just so that you're offering the highlight but in a way that's still very skin-like. This is really about keeping the texture um, sheer, but I'm actually gonna build on top of this just to warm it up into her skin. Because right now it just looks very highlighty, but you really wanna offer that warmth back into her skin. So we're just gonna warm that up. So now that we're inside shooting with this window light, we're getting this nice soft light coming across Ari's face. The problem is it's coming from one side. So we need to fill in the light. And to do that, we're gonna work with reflectors. We've got a couple of options here. So one is just a white panel that's gonna bounce some light on her. Um, this is about the weakest kind of reflector that you're gonna use. It's not giving us as much uh, pushback as we'd like for the shoot. Your other option, which is the kind of other end of the spectrum, is a silver reflector. And that's gonna give you the maximum kind of output, but it adds a little bit of a cooled cast to your model's face. And we don't necessarily want that for Ari either. So what we're going to do today is work with a gold daylight reflector. And that's gonna give us this nice warm fill light across her face. One of the most popular lighting modifiers for fashion and beauty is a beauty dish. And what separates a beauty dish from a regular reflector is this disc right in the center. So what happens when you're firing a strobe through this light is the light's coming through, it's bouncing back and around the reflector and hitting your model's face. Another thing that it will do is it's gonna give you nice natural round catch lights in your model's eye. There are a couple things to be aware of when working with a beauty dish. One, you want it to be close to your model. You don't want to go much further than about two feet, three feet from your model. You're going to start losing the beauty dish's effect. That You need to have uh, a boom attached to your light stand. You can use a light stand, but you're going to be competing with it as a photographer. If you have the light stand in front of you and you're trying to shoot through it, it's a mess. You don't want to do that. So if you have a boom, then you can position it exactly where you want, very precisely. The light's pretty hard coming out of this. So if you want to soften your light, 
you can add a sock to it that's gonna give you a little bit of a more diffuse look. It's closer to a soft box. On the other hand, if you want the light even more direct, you can control spill by attaching a grid to the light. With that beauty dish light, you really are seeing everything. So typically, even before I start makeup in that scenario, I'll make sure that I exfoliate, I'll make sure that we take off any facial hair as much as possible, and sometimes the model actually does that the day before. But it's particularly important with this type of light because you can see texture, and you can see pretty much everything. You can see facial hair, peach fuzz, you know, tiny little dry skin spots, you know, that you really need to pay attention to. So right now what I'm doing is I'm really picking up the light on the center of the face. I'm taking a tone that's a little bit lighter than her skin tone just to really pick up the lightness. The other thing that's really important is depending on where your light is being placed, and in this case you're doing it in the center of her face, that's usually where you actually pick up a lot of shine and maybe not in the most flattering way. So as a makeup artist, I have to pay attention to maybe mattify the center zone or wherever the light is actually hitting the face in the strongest way possible. Behind me, you'll notice that we've also set up two sets of B-flats. And what that's doing is that's blocking out any extra light. What we want for this shot is to really concentrate on what we're getting from the beauty dish. We're still gonna add a reflector underneath with my assistant, Eddie, uh, to give us a little bit of fill under the nose and under the chin, but we don't want any extraneous light coming in because we really wanna show the contours of the model's face. Because you're compensating that beautiful light with dark V-flats on the left and right of her, you're actually incorporating a natural contour even without me doing anything. So if I were starting from scratch, I would actually maybe not do too much of a contour because the lighting is already wrapping that shadow around her anyway. So Milani, when you're looking at these from a makeup artist's perspective, what are you seeing? It adds the exact amount of highlights that I love without making the skin look too oily. It's giving that kick of juiciness and healthy glow that I love in the skin. And then we're moving into, with the grid, a little bit harsher contrast here. What I'm noticing with the grid is that the skin looks really blown out and there's hot spots in places that I didn't expect to see hot spots. I also think it's really important for a makeup artist to realize that if you are gonna use the grid without any other adjustments, we have to really step in and powder in zones that we originally weren't planning on. Mm -hmm. I think this is a dialogue that makeup artists and photographers should have more often. Absolutely. I think it's important to encourage this conversation and I think hopefully through our work today we're actually encouraging that collaborative process between photographer and makeup artist. And I also hope that it really allows us as makeup artists or makeup artists who are transitioning into photography to make much more informed decisions because lighting is crucial. Well everybody, I hope this was helpful for you and thanks for watching.